Why do people think, we, we, we do, I think this. When things are going well, you think this. Everyone thinks that we're not going to be tested. Life is supposed to be a breeze. Life is supposed to be fun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah An-Kabut, verse 2, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do people really believe, do, re, do people really think that once they say, آمَنَّا that we believe, i.e. we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they will be left alone, وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ and they won't be tested? Do you really believe that if you say you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you really think that Allah is going to leave you alone and say, that's it, your, your, your passage into Jannah is clear. No, you're surely going to be tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other verses of the Quran, He informed us of how He tested the hearts of those that came before us, i.e. the previous nation. Why? So to test their hearts, to, to know those who are truthful and to know those who are untruthful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tests our hearts. And it's a win-win situation for us. As a believer, we're, going to, we're in a situation that even if we have shukr, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with something, or we have sabr, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes something away from us, it's a win-win situation for the believer. There's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And pay attention, pay attention to this. أَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٌ وَلَيْسَ ذَاكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءُ شَكَرٍ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءُ صَبَرًا فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ the Prophet ﷺ said, Strange, ajib is the affair of the believer. Strange is his affair. Indeed, all of his affairs are good for him. If something pleasing befalls him, shakara, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is better for him. It becomes better for him. And if something harmful befalls him, then he is patient and it becomes better for him. Then his patience is better for him. So either way, despite what condition you're in, if you show your shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's going to be better for you and it's going to be proven to be better for you. If on the other hand, you're, in a, you're, you're facing adversity and you show your sabr, then that will be better for you. Ibn Qayyim al jawziya he states that if this world was not a station of tests, it would not be filled with sicknesses, calamities, accidents and misery. If life is not about hardships, then the, prophet and the, the prophets and the pious people would have lived the most and then they would have lived the longest. If our life was supposed to be a breeze, then Allah would have taken away death. Because death is, according to one hadith, the greatest calamity. The greatest hardship is death. Allah would have taken all of that away. But there's a purpose, there's a divine purpose for every single thing that we experience. Yet unfortunately, it's something that we don't understand and we don't appreciate. Because the chemicals in our brain don't function, especially when you're suffering and a time of adversity, usually people happen to, you know, in a way, go crazy. You know? It's difficult for them to understand and appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that moment. It's difficult. The most difficult thing to do, you know, I'm telling you, I assure you, when somebody is suffering, the most difficult thing for them to do is to remain patient. It's not going to be easy. And when you say it to them, have patience, be patient. That's the most difficult thing for someone to hear when they're suffering. That's the most hardest thing to do at that moment in time. Have patience? How can I have patience? Have patience on what? They're not denying 
the fact that they're in this position because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're not denying that. But their heart is such, or their hearts are such, that it doesn't allow them, it doesn't allow them to have patience upon the matter. It doesn't allow them to be uh, among those who are patient at that critical moment and at that critical time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, you know, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَادَ Seek help through patience and seek help through prayer. Um, it's an unbelievable. It, it is, try it. So this is why sabr and, and salah, patience and prayer, both of them are synonymous with one another. One is incomplete without the other. If you think that you're going to be blessed with, with sabr, you think you're going to be blessed with, with patience automatically without praying, think again, because that's not going to happen. Because sabr is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabr comes upon those who are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in order for you to be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to pray towards Him. You need to ask Him for that. You cannot, we cannot, I cannot. Personally, we cannot expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower His blessings upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, continue to alleviate all of our problems without us doing something in exchange or something to deserve that. We have to pray. We have to make dua. 